Sveiki, čia yra Jonas, čia yra Vikta. Jie abu yra švedai, įsivaizduojat, švedai mano studijai. Jonas yra buvęs mano studijai, bet kad du švedai būtų mano studijai, tada nėra buvę. Ir Jonas pasiūlė šį jauną žmogų, jis yra buvęs švedijos armijos karininkas, taip? Ja. Ir jis šiandien kovojo Ukrainoje. It's very nice of you to, to, to fight for freedom in Ukraine. Can you tell about yourself? The name and the rank, first of all? Absolutely. So, my name is Victor, and I am a second lieutenant, or at least former second lieutenant. I've mm. been a civilian for the last two years. Uh, I spent about eight years in the Swedish Armed Forces before becoming a civilian and started doing uh, consultant, consultant work. On what, what branch in the army? Uh, the, the army. Uh, oh, the, the, the armored, armored ah, all right. tanks. Mechanized. Oh. Mechanized, mode, more, more like motorized infantry. Okay, but, yeah. okay. So it's been four years in the army then? Eight years. Oh, uh, so I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, 2013 to 2020. And then I've been a civilian for the last two years. And uh, when the war escalated in February, I felt oh, I had to do something. That's, so very, that's very good you are using this escalated term because many people think that the war had started only nine months ago. It's actually, it took place in 2014, right? Absolutely. And how many Swedes are aware of that? I think some of them are, especially... Two of you. you, just two of you. <laughs> two of us, yeah, yeah exactly. Good start. So we know. Good start. <laughs> have to start somewhere. Yeah. No, but um, at least if you look at people in the Swedish Armed Forces, they are very yeah. much well aware. Carry on, carry on. And uh, I would say that, well, at least a part of the population understand that this is not something new, this is mm -hmm. actually going on for a while. But I'd say that the, the larger masses are not really that understanding. Mm -hmm. And now in Ukraine, you're just a private? First class, no? Well, on, on paper at least. Mm -hmm. um, and that has a lot to do with that you're not actually able to become an officer in the Ukrainian army unless you are a citizen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is not something that I'm interested in currently. Okay. So, uh, well, I am I'm the company commander of the 300th Swedish Volunteer Company. Uh, it starts actually at the size of a company currently. You it's said 300? 312. Th that's a, nearly that, a battalion. That's the number. That's the number of the I'm company. I'm sorry. Oh, right, okay. right. No, it's okay. not the amount of personnel. It's, right. it's just uh, the number of the company. Mm -hmm. And uh, originally it was larger than it currently is. Mm -hmm. uh, originally it was a rifle company mm -hmm. at the start of uh, Mars. Um, but as, as it went by, uh, it was identified that, well, sure, we might be able to set up a company, but we're not actually going to be able to fight as a company because mm -hmm. there's not the structure needed mm -hmm. uh, is not actually set in place. Um, I mean, you don't, you don't have uh, um, armored vehicles required for that? Yeah? Exactly. And uh, you also need to understand how to actually utilize a maneuver company. Mm, yeah. uh, even if you had the vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, it's not something you just use as a... Uh, I mean, there are specific ways of how you actually maneuver. But, but as a lieutenant, he could command a company, technically, or just a platoon? A uh, platoon, actually. Oh, right. yeah. okay. At least from the Swedish perspective. Okay. Uh, a company commander would usually be a captain, a captain yes, or sure. possibly uh, a major. Mm -hmm. possibly. Right. Uh, so, no, uh, it was not actually... <laughs> this was not actually according to plan, so to speak. Uh, originally, I simply helped it out with coordinating. Uh, those Swedish volunteers who wanted to go down and join the fight. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, how I would started. like to stop here. How yeah. many of them? Just can we imagine some numbers? How many Swedes? Yes. Uh, Is it hundreds or thousands? Or tens? I would say it's probably hundreds. And, uh, but then again, it's difficult to say because some people, they joined initially. Uh -huh. and realize, well, this is not the, really the settings that I'm looking for. I'm not okay. going to be able to be utilized in the correct manner. Okay. And that is something you saw quite a lot of, especially early on, uh, and especially after Yavoriv. Mm -hmm. um, the whole fact that, well, it doesn't really matter if you were a former British major yeah. or if you had never held a rifle in your life. Yeah. Everyone is going to the trenches. Yeah. And it's difficult to convince yourself to stay if you're not utilized in the way that would be most efficient. Mm -hmm. And that is absolutely understandable, um, which is one of the reasons that we decided to leave the Legion and look for another unit. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not the Legion anymore? It's no, it's something not. Something. It's, it's, it's actually a territorial defense brigade currently. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I mean, 
how we end up there is a long story, but uh, basically uh, the former commander who was before me, he was killed in action in July. I'm sorry. Yes, me as well. A Swede? Yes, a Swedish guy, okay. Lieutenant Zelander. Mm -hmm. And uh, before he was killed, he was able to identify a few things. Uh, one other thing was, well, we need more instructors, really. Yes. That is what we should focus on uh -huh. to actually spread the knowledge that we have and, uh, you know, ensure that no matter if you're Ukrainian or if you're a foreigner, there should be some kind of cohesion, there should be some kind of, uh, uh, at least some kind of standard. What mm -hmm. SOPs do you use? Mm -hmm. um, what templates do you use on your orders? And what does ambush actually mean? Mm -hmm. And what, how does it differ from um, a fire charge or whatever it might be? Uh, or what does an assault actually mean? Mm -hmm. what, what level of ambition does it entail? And so on and so forth. And uh, that is what he started doing in, uh, in May, really. We decided, okay, well, we might be able to have a company, but if we were, if we're not going to be able to actually act as a company within the battalion in, in, the, in the manner that we perceive as the most efficient, well, maybe it's not something that we should focus on. I mean, we have to ask ourselves, okay, well, this is how we want to do it, but then again, what is Ukrainian needs mm -hmm. and how do we weight them in, uh, in comparison to what the Ukrainians are actually able to use us for. Mm -hmm. So even if we have the same idea of how we should utilize this, it doesn't mean it's actually possible because there is a lot of things going on in the background that needs to simply work in order, in order to, to do what we were trying to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, thus we started focusing on instructing instead. And uh, during July, um, or at least like in, in, the, in the beginning of July, uh, we identified, well, what we need to focus on really is to set up um, basically a foundation for, for uh, a medical team. Uh, not, not, it's not just about finding combat medics, it's actually about, well, you have to acquire equipment for them. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not just tourniquets and bandages, you, you need ketamine, you need fentanyl, you need whole blood on the front line, you need EKG monitors, you need surgeons, you need all these things that I used to take for granted because they've always just been there. Well, they aren't, at least not on the Territorial Defense Brigades. Mm -hmm. Might be different on the regular armed forces. Mm -hmm. I can't say, I don't have any experience. And I believe that's where Jonas kicks in with his help. Uh, sort, basically, huh? uh, may I say? I'm sorry to interrupt. No, sure, sure. sure. Like uh, uh, I, uh, these are territorial brigade mm -hmm. level. It's it's like more like the Lithuanian uh, Cusp, something like yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, these units are uh, again. It was seen in the Ukrainian situation. They are aimed to to have limited def more of a d defense uh, tasks, uh, so defending a certain territory or or a township or something like that. Mm -hmm. Normally, it kind of they have a local character, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. However, in this war, because of the lack of personnel, lack of units, some of these territorial defense units, territorial brigades, are actually performing combat tasks mm -hmm. at, at the front line, and uh, some of them pretty advanced as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we must understand that 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 uh, this is we have a dilemma here. On the one hand, you are talking about low priority units with lots of issues such as the, the on the medical side also other issues for heavy weapons etc mm -hmm. uh, and they're being used for for much much more advanced tasks and and of course they lack such capacities yeah. that said on the, like uh, for regular brigades assault brigades i would say probably the situation is a little better but they still i still recognize many of the problems they have they have the same problems on, 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 on regular brigades. So it's not like, nothing like unique or, 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 or very different than, than, okay. than the normal. But you get something at least. Pardon me? You get something at least at the end of the day of the things you've mentioned. Well, some of them, but uh, most of them is actually things that we have to procure for ourselves, mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons that we found blue and yellow. Yeah. Uh, we have intentionally tried to have this, such a low profile as possible. Um, we're not doing this for the social media or the glory. Uh, I understand. Yes. But we've reached a point where we're at a crossroads. Oh, if we want to make this work, we need external help. 
And if we want external help, well, then we have to show ourselves. And uh, we're not alone with this. There are uh, a few of these uh, situations currently uh, occurring where foreigners try to do something very specific. Yeah. But um, that's, that's not really the things that you see, uh, at least not on TikTok and Instagram, because mo most of these people are very professional and understand OPSEC and understand that well operational security yeah, yeah, exactly yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. thank you sorry to do listeners and viewers so um re really um those who would i wouldn't say need the, the 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 support the most that's not that's not what i'm trying to say uh, but i have a difficulty trying to find another term for it mm -hmm. but those who are trying to do what we are trying to do that is to say set up the foundations for an actual foreign unit to be able to be used as a um, operational resource on the brigade level. That is to say, okay, we can offer this kind of support, such mm -hmm. as a medical platoon, mm -hmm. and we're going to be able to give it to you between this state and this state. And you can utilize it on any battalion that you see fit that is currently leading the spare point, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And we will give them these capabilities between these states, and then we will need to resupply rearm mm -hmm. rest and then we can go again mm -hmm. and we're not the only ones trying to do this but this requires a um, it re really it requires logistics and coordination that is not something you simply find you have to create it your on your own mm -hmm. um, the brigades naturally try to help us as much as they can but they have very much to do already as it is and they appreciate the territorial and the brigade exactly okay. And they are quite busy as it is. Um, and, but that's also the issue. Every additional hour that we spend just trying to coordinate how to get more fentanyl yeah. is an hour we don't spend doing our job. Doing our job, yeah. So instead of actually being on the front line commanding, as an example, the medical platoon. And taking war prisoners. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, instead of doing that, mm -hmm. uh, it feels like I'm mostly running around signing papers and talking mm -hmm. to people. And that is absolutely a large part of being in the military. Not everyone is actually fighting. There's a huge supportive structure mm -hmm. and the whole state behind you. Yes. However, it's not something that we currently have access to, which means that we have to procure everything ourselves. But are things getting better somewhat? Absolutely, they, they are. But these things take time and we're talking about volumes. Mm -hmm. Um, as an example, in, uh, in the spring, the Swedish government uh, donated several hundreds of end laws. That is absolutely magnificent, but it's spent in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. The volumes that we're talking about are huge. Are really short in that numbers? <sighs> well, you have, to, it, you have to look at the front line. The front line yeah. is absolutely gigantic. Yeah. All right. yeah, and uh, if the only thing you have an end law, if, you, if that's the only thing you you have access to, you don't actually have access to an RPG or an AT4, mm -hmm. well, that is the only anti-tank weaponry you have. Well, you shouldn't use this for a truck, so to speak, mm -hmm. to but if that's what you have, then that's what you're going to, going to use. So lots of overcurse with that? I can't say for sure, I can only speculate, right. um, but that is always going to happen. Mm -hmm. But it's also a question about target prioritization. You should always prioritize logistics. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah, sure. and absolutely. And maybe you should save that for a tank. But if you're going to miss that opportunity, well, in my opinion, it's better to use it, try to get a new one, rather than missing that opportunity. Because logistics is what's winning wars, mm -hmm. always. It's not up to the individual soldier. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Um, which, once again, takes us to the volumes. Mm -hmm. And we have been spending a lot of time and a lot of resources in trying to get proper medical equipment so that we actually can prolong uh, the survivability of the individual soldier. So we actually can reach the golden hour so that we actually can mm. do something more than simply putting a tonic on someone and, mm. well, good luck. Hope you get to... How, are, yeah. how are the Ukrainians cooperating? Are they getting better at their English and things like that? And <sighs> I mean, absolutely. Uh, we actually have a translator who is helping us immensely. Mm -hmm. uh, this wouldn't be local possible. Local guy? Yeah. Pardon me? A local guy? Yes, a local guy. He's, oh. uh, he's a part of the brigade. Um, 
I originally met him doing an officer's course for some of the officers on the brigade. Mm -hmm. uh, that is how I met him. And well, I held on to him mm -hmm. quite tightly after that. And well, now he's, yeah. he's helping us with this. So what about you seeing real action? How many times? Myself, not much. And that is one of my big frustrations. It feels like I'm mostly going around on meetings and doing paperwork. I have a barking dog here. Yeah, I can give you a pistol, you can shoot him. <laughs> well, he stopped barking before we began. Yes. No, yeah, well, it's, it's not really about that. It's more that I'm quite outside of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. uh, the, really. Um, I mean, we, we're all doing the best we can, but I'm simply a second lieutenant. Mm -hmm. Like, I shouldn't really be coordinating a multinational foreign company in Ukraine. There should be some other officers out there who could do it yeah. better than me. And that is one of the main issues. It is that, and especially when I talk to other officers who are still in the army, it uh, doesn't matter if it's the Swedish or Norwegian army, mm -hmm. uh, they wish to go. They really want to. But it comes down to two questions. Can they afford to do it? Because mm -hmm. some of them have mortgages and uh, families. Yeah, sure. And yeah, sure. And uh, the other is, well, will they be welcomed back into their ordinary armies after the war? Why? Well, I can only speak from the Swedish perspective. Yes. But when it comes to volunteer fighters, uh, and yeah. I'm not absolutely certain of this, so take what I'm saying with a, with right. some, with a grain of salt. But yeah. as I understand it, if you go and volunteer for another, like for, for a foreign nation, you will be put in the same category as fighting for ISIS. Really, you're just a foreign... Technically, you mean? Technically. Technically, from a legal That's standpoint. That's a shame. As I understand it. I, I might be misinformed on this, but right. this is what I've been able to figure out. Okay. And, well, sure, I'm not going to have the same issues coming back home because yeah. I've not actually been fighting for ISIS, right? Yeah. I've been doing for the good cause. Yes. And so, no, it, it might not, in the end, it might not be the same result, but you're still going to have the same stamp on your paper mm -hmm. at the security police. Okay. And... Well, but this is just the Swedish perspective. Uh, other nations have their own laws yeah, sure. and everyone will have their own issues. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the main things. Um, I have a lot of former colleagues who would like to join, but mm -hmm. they simply can't motivate it, either because of financial or for legal reasons. And and I absolutely financial understand that. Financial reason is understandable, but the latter is uh, rather shameful. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, it's not well, up to I, me, though. There's this uh, topic I would like to discuss with you guys. Uh, we have one Swiss here who understands what a Russian is uh, profoundly and perfectly. Uh, we may uh, assume that, yeah. What about you and your uh, countrymen? What is a Russian? Yes. Do you, I mean, does a, a, uh, an ordinary Swedish person, a man, understand what Russians are? I would say it's probably a 50-50. Mm -hmm. So that's much better than 22-80. <laughs> Absolutely, it, it is better. Um, I, I, I see I, this. We, we, have this, we have this heritage since the Cold War, mm -hmm. right, of always preparing for the big Russian or the big Soviet invasion. Mm -hmm. but then again, Sweden has been neutral in some way for the last 200 years. And, uh, we the have last been war was uh, 1840. And you uh, actually, the last fight on Swedish soil was in 1809. 1809, oh. yeah. Right. yeah. But I mean, it's a mix. Um, I mean, we've always prepared for, well, the neighbor in the east. It's not Russia, it's the neighbor in the east. But I mean, mm -hmm. naturally, we're yeah. not, everyone understands this, what we mean. The strategic shift in the mind of a common person in the West, in, in Sweden, for, for, mm -hmm. for that matter, I, I reckon it's, it has moved. Uh, quite dramatically, in a good way, I mean. So do I. Um, but that's kind of the thing. Um, up until the, the fall of the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. I mean, everyone understood, well, Russia is the enemy, mm -hmm. and they might come any time. Well, Soviet and, and Soviet Union and back in those days. And then we had this eternal peace, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, which is that the whole Swedish army was restructured. The, the civil, civil defense was put on hold and mm -hmm. a lot of things happened. Almost scrapped, you may say. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there were some hardcore shifts back in those days. And then we decided, well, we're not going to have a conscription army anymore. We're only going to have professional soldiers and mm -hmm. we're only going to do things for the United Nations and do mm -hmm. peacekeeping. And yeah. 
I can understand why you decided to do that. Like, I understand it, I don't agree with it. But that is really what happened. And, uh, oh, really? It was an internal peace, really? We're back in the same situation. Hmm, who would have figured? Mm -hmm. And really, the, the, the reasoning behind it is, is, is large and complex. Um, on, on the military level, you always understood, well, no, this is not the end. This is just going to mean that we're going to have a rematch in a few decades, uh -huh. which means that this is a golden opportunity to reform the army, mm -hmm. uh, remove the big infantry brigades and, you know, start from scratch and do something great. And then as the years went by, they kind of forgot, forgot about what, what the idea was. And it became just this small core army that mm -hmm. was supposed to do very specific things abroad. But that was never the original idea. It was just something that kind of happened as politics and the years went by. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but then again, you still have the legacy, the understanding that, whoa, shit, Russia is a thing, right? But between there, you've had a few decades where everything was really turned upside down. And I think people are starting to wake up and realize, mm -hmm. but I don't think they grasp the severity of the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't. In my opinion, not this yet. is not a war between Russia and Ukraine. This is a war between Russia and the Western world. Oh, put it simply, evil versus good. That is one way of putting it. Um, I, I'm... It's, it's really difficult to say, mm -hmm. but it is, what we're looking at is hybrid warfare. Yeah, sure. Right. And yeah. while the violence might be limited to Ukrainian soil mm -hmm. currently, that mm -hmm. might still change, we still have an energy war. We still have a war on the information. Yeah, sure. We still have... Um, it, that, that, that's the difficulty. You can't really identify what is what. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. I, the, it was... Uh, it was, I think, in 2016 or so, uh, there was uh, this um, mm, dispute, or well, argument on Facebook, and uh, it was on some international page, and there were some guys from Sweden who were very pro-Putin, and they were genuine guys, I mean, they were not, not trolls or bots. And uh, these days, uh, how many Vatniks do you have in your society? Because every society does have some amount of, of that sort of people. And uh, say, out of uh, ten... I, I, could, I could try to, to, to reply to that. Uh, again, we must understand that, that these uh, terminologies, understandable in Eastern Europe, it's mm -hmm. less visible in, in Western Europe, where, where you have these shades of grey, Yes, basically. sure. Uh, to find uh, the same for instance in Sweden, you can find some really genuinely pro Putin, pro Russian people. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be hard. You may be, you know, one or two percent or, or less. Yes. However, people that uh, want to, you know, to, to, to see it from a different angle, to, of course, not, not liking the US or, 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 or whatever, and trying, therefore, to use this to. to not necessarily for pro-Russian purposes, but also for other purposes to, to far dis right. discredit the U.S., I say, for instance. And, and they are provoking this war, and they, they're just, you know, they're just warmongers, they're, yeah, they're sure. just what, what not. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, in, 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 in West, uh, and, and for instance, Sweden, this is a much, much more complicated and hard to, to perceive uh, mm -hmm. matter, whereas here, as, as we have a much, much more a clearer view, even here, it may be Difficult sometimes to see who is who, but we have issues. Uh, but but still, but in the case of Sweden, we, and also of course we have ignorance. We have people who do not, you know, ah, who cares? The vast majority, I would the, say. yeah, it is a war. The, these there, are, some guys are fighting, and who mm -hmm. who who who, who, who cares? Basically, yeah. ignorance and and and, and not, no uninterest, you know, no interest in actually starting to see, see the picture. And uh, to me, for instance, personally, it's, it's a great to see how people like Victor and others they actually take a stand and they even do something about it. Understanding that this, we have to figure this out. We have to put Putin down, basically. Mm -hmm. This is a war against everything we stand for, all our values, all our political agreements, or the, the, the world order that, that, that we cherish and, 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 and uh, live with. It's a challenge against all of it. So we, we, have, we have to do it. Yeah, sure, we so, so. Uh, But it's kind of the point. Not everyone sees it that way in Sweden. Mm -hmm. Since we have 
really taking a stance on anything. We like to keep it grey, right? Somewhere in mm. the middle. That is the Swedish way traditionally. Yeah. So, which was why we've been neutral through the whole the Cold War. Yeah, so, sure. I mean, yeah, we were Soviet friendly, but at the same time, we were helping NATO intelligence gathering information on the Soviet Union. So, I mean, we've always been doing both things. Yes. Which is why we have this idea of, uh, not, I can't speak for the whole Swedish people, but we have, so we have this way of, well, I mean, there's no right or wrong per se, there mm. must simply be yes. a different way of looking at it. Sure. And uh, that sometimes makes it, <sighs> everything takes longer, mm. everything takes a long time and there mm. must always be some kind of group that will try to figure out, mm. go to the bottom of it and, well, who started it? And in this case, I mean, it's quite obvious. Uh, I don't need to wait for some governmental organization to tell me who mm -hmm. started doing what. This is not two drunk guys fighting at a bus station where, yeah, okay, sure. who, who started it? No, mm -hmm. this, is, this is rape and assault, and it's quite obvious to see mm -hmm. who you should help. And I can only speak for myself, but having been in the Swedish army for a few years, um, there is this legacy of shame of not helping Finland more mm, during the it's still lingering on. It still lingers, absolutely. And oh. it's something that you just what the hell? Oh. Why didn't we do more? That's very And huge. I'm not going to it add happened, to that. Let that happen again. No. Oh. That is my personal responsibility okay. towards myself and my values and for what I mm. stand for. Have you ever met uh, a, a prisoner of war, a Russian commander? I have not. Uh, before that, any contact with any military, uh, Russian? No. All right. What about uh, Ukrainian officers? Are they capable? Are they nice people? I mean, are they real? I know they are tough guys. Absolutely. That goes without mentioning. But I, 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 can, it, it, can, can you see any? Can you comment on any comment on any um, positive dynamics of their professionalism? Positive dynamics, I can find a bunch of, and mm -hmm. negative as well. Mm -hmm. It's rarely that simple. Rarely. Um, so I, I, might, I might change this as I go by, but just like that, there are like three different types. Mm -hmm. There are those who are absolutely great. Mm -hmm. They are fantastic and they have several years of experience. They've been doing this in 2014 and mm -hmm. they know, really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, off bo both officers and uh, servicemen? Absolutely. Yeah, right. Both of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are very good, mm -hmm. really. Uh, there's not much I can say about it, except that I'm impressed, mm -hmm. especially about their courage and their morale, mm -hmm. absolutely. But you have this issue when you do a large upscaling, you will have uh, growth pains. Growth, growth pains? Growth pains. Right. So that maybe doesn't translate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. growth pains, yeah, yeah growth sure, pains. sure. Basically, yeah. when the organization grows Growth's larger than quickly. you can crawl it, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. too quickly. When, you, when you're a child and you have growing. Yeah, exactly. well, that's, but that is where uh, the metaphor comes from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, in our case, we grew like 100 times in one week back in, in uh, end of February. And I mean, yes. for us, we are still managing the changes. It's, and it's, it's extremely complicated when you grow fast. I can tell you from my own, own mm -hmm. experience. So, oh. so that's, uh, and when it comes to the Ukrainian army, a lot of young officers were killed in the Battle of Kiev. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's not, that's not only it, but that meant that you lost a few of the younger officers who were trained or at least educated in a more Western NATO standard. Yes. And then at the same time, you mobilize the reserves, mm -hmm. which means that you need more officers. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have enough officers, well, there's only really two ways of doing it. You can take in whoever as a former officer mm -hmm. who are stuck in the Soviet legacy. Absolutely or you will create new officers from civilians, mm -hmm. which means that they do not have the experience. And it takes time. It takes time, and it's not only time, you need very specific conditions mm -hmm. in order to actually evolve in a way that is as efficient as possible. Right. And it takes, once again, like you said, time. And those are usually the officers who are put in the territorial defense brigades, mm -hmm. usually, because you have to do priorities. And since they are mostly supposed to defend terrain and not actually do assaults, mm -hmm. well, 
it's okay. They only okay. need how to territorial. Defend. Exactly. That's the yeah. whole idea. Mm -hmm. But then again, well, it's difficult to use mechanized infantry in a uh, city. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's difficult. It's always difficult to fight in cities. CQB and CQC is some of the most difficult things you can do. What's that? Uh, close quarter combat oh, and right. uh, close quarter battles. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, yeah, basically yeah. the same thing, but really it's fighting in cities. Mm -hmm. It is one of the most difficult and time consuming things you can do. Mm -hmm. And the amount, of per the, the amount of personnel that you need is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I, I can't even start to describe how, how, how much people you need to safely take a city. Safely mm -hmm. take a city. It's super difficult. Com compared just to a piece of land. Absolutely, mm -hmm. because land you can control on a distance. Yeah, sure. Cities, absolutely, you can besiege them, mm -hmm. but it's not really going to help your cause. But if you need to take, f first of all, like, why do you need a city? What is the purpose of this city? That is the first question. Uh, you should avoid fighting in cities mm -hmm. if you don't need to. But then again, if you need to, well, that's going to take a lot of personnel. A lot of personnel. Uh, you fight building by building, block by block, mm -hmm. district by district, which means once again logistics and so on and so forth. And the mechanized brigades, well, they need to be prioritized and they need to be uh, focused on the terrains that they are the most suitable for, which mm -hmm. is to say open landscapes and, well, forests, not forests per se, but yeah, clear yeah, clearings, sure, sure. Uh, which means that, oh, when you need infantry. And then you take the territorial defense brigades because they are mostly infantry. And then again, you, you have the same problem that you're being used for something that you're not orig originally meant, meant to be used for. Mm -hmm. And that comes with a bunch of complications. Mm -hmm. um, that's re really the only way I can summarize it. It, 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 is, it is simply too, too complicated to summarize in, in a... Oh. In an hour or so. Talking about uh, trained personnel, mm. have you met any any um, Ukrainian guy coming back from the UK being highly trained already? Uh, I'm no, talking about those several oh. thousand people. Who right? No, sent not to not currently, not mm -hmm. personally. But then but again, they are um, around, I guess. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, I hear about them. Yes, I, I have, and, yes, and, sure. and I would say they're very motivated. They're very very eager to go. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, yeah. it, it is are, are they young? Are they conscript uh, age? Well, uh, I would say probably more, maybe thirty. Oh, a little. I mean, some of them are okay. definitely they have some That's some the best age with some course. common experience. And and uh, again, you take these, uh, they get this training, tactical set of training, and get back to Ukraine. And my impression is that some of them they're not being utilized. They're not being given the the possibilities to do what they're actually being trained for. Because no tanks. Uh, no, 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 no. It's more like uh, it's again. It's about command structures. It, it's about uh, for for they're let's kept say for, for the victory or something. No, for no, the no, no. They're, they're fighting. I mean, but again, mm -hmm. you're being used for for some kind of like standard fighting. You maybe have some some other abilities, but maybe not being used probably because there's a lack of structure, the lack of lack of a system for actually mm -hmm. maneuver warfare when you use various different kinds of assets. You know, artillery. Uh, armored vehicles, uh, in IFDs, infantry, yeah. uh, in direct, indirect fire, etc. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, very complex. Yeah. And uh, to me, it seems that that uh, this is just my, my impression. But they, while they're doing it, and and while they're not bad at it, but but many of these uh, assets or, or capabilities given by NATO, by in the UK, for instance, are not being they're not being able to use it uh, efficiently. Mm -hmm. Basically, but again, that's my impression. I'm not. I'm not saying uh, okay. that's. The, so okay. while the training is, is a very good thing, of course, and and, and some of these youth have definitely gained some serious skills. Mm -hmm. But again, it's just a small part of the whole system. Several. Th Several. Th I mean, oh, in, in, our, in an army of, of half a million yeah, or, sure. or, or, or more. But then again, you if you're trained, if you have a. A uh, division trained in the UK, but that is not uh, that's not what has happened. I mean, they're, they're, these people are being you know from different units, and they're not yeah, necessarily so, so. It's it's. I mean, why? Not? I mean, it's a good thing for many purposes. Definitely. It's a good thing, but that, I definitely see, for instance, that you need to train. Let's say you take a whole you take a whole brigade and mm -hmm. you train the brigade, 
you can do it, say, in Poland, or you mm -hmm. can do it even in Ukraine, if that would be possible. You can do it here. You could do it here. Why not? Yeah, Several sure. hundred, why, why not? not? It would be capable. So, so again, while this, it's, a, it's a good effort, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great thing, but, but you still see it look to me as a bit more complex, you know, okay. in a systematically. That's my impression. Again, mm -hmm. and I think that, that uh, the impressions by Victor here and others, it, it, it confirms my, 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 my assumption that mm -hmm. this is something that you have to... You have to look into the system, basically. You have to be more systemic when looking at how to, to employ... How far can you go being systemic? When, mm. when can you feel that that's enough? Now I'm systemic. I mean, how far from that point are they recently? Uh, here's, yeah. here's the thing. Um, when, when you look at an army, mm. it, it's not a system. It's a system of systems All right. who in its turn are made up of subsystems who are made up by supportive systems mm -hmm. and yeah. organizational change is something that takes a long time yes. and when I say a long time I don't mean years I mean decades mm -hmm. uh, it takes so long because it's not just an, a question about skills and capabilities it's also a lot about culture mm -hmm. and this is absolutely like this is the this is the correct time to do it. Mm -hmm. Should have been done decades ago, but I mean, that's late that never. Exactly, and uh, I mean the only time better than yesterday is now. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean you have to start s somewhere. Yeah. But these things take time, and even if let's say that we had, we we, we took a battal a few battalions, mm -hmm. and we gave them the training and the equipment to be able to act like a proper maneuver battalion, right? Doesn't mean that they're actually gonna be able to use it. Mm -hmm. Because behind that, you need logistics, and you need system understanding, you need operational arts, you need uh, a strategic mindset that's, that's right, yeah. on, it, on its whole, like on, on every level, is focused on taking initiative. Mm -hmm. But then again, you have this Soviet legacy. Well, well, you don't take initiatives because you might get yelled at or shot in the head by a commissar. Yeah. So you don't take initiative. Yeah. And those are two words that are constantly clashing. Mm -hmm. And it takes time to change that mindset. But the better side is taking the upper hand recently, I believe. Absolutely. I mean... <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be I, not, not all is bad. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's uh, and and I, I, I really, I don't want to mm -hmm. badmouth anyone. Yeah, absolutely. The, the Ukrainian army is doing absolutely fantastic, mm -hmm. considering the settings that they started with. Absolutely, I am absolutely yes. amazed. Mm -hmm. But what I'm speaking about now is actually sharpening the knife, mm -hmm. not if the. If mm -hmm. And these things take time. Really, they do. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about large scale state-to-state -state warfare, mm. the volumes of just logistics and personnel, mm. it is absolutely massive. Mm. And this is Russia we're talking about. Let us look at the brighter side of, mm. this, of this matter, the Russian side. They lack everything aforementioned, in mm. my opinion, these days, right? Absolutely, which is why we need to seize the initiative. This is not the time to Oh, we're doing good. Now we can relax for a while. Mm -hmm. No, we need to keep having the initiative. Yeah. This is the opportunity. They're weak, which means we need to keep on punching while we have the time, mm -hmm. because they are also going to learn. Mm -hmm. And their capabilities and resources are also going to improve. There's one thing, there's one thing, a very important one, that uh, not only Westerners, even in, in, on this land, people forget. Back then, yeah, in 1989 or 1990, when the mm. USSR collapsed, or was about to collapse, mm. there were 290 million living there. Today is half of that, 840. And the half they have lost is the best, the better half of theirs. I mean, the Ukrainians, us, the Georgians, and all that stuff. And mm. I'm excluding Belarusians. For now, mm. no. Obviously, and, uh, the, the point is, the, yeah. the, the, the people just don't understand that this is no more the same Russia or Russian Empire that was really capable, full of manpower. Mm. Not anymore. Not anymore. Which is why we need to keep on seizing the initiative. Because if we don't have the manpower, well, then they're going to have to focus on something else, mm. which is probably either 
weapon platform escalation mm -hmm. or re-equipping. And it is, it is a matter of time. Sure. Everything uh, is a matter it, of time. It, it, it is. Yes. But what I mean is that even as incompetent as Russia seemed to be, mm -hmm. well, they're not idiots just no, because they're they incapable. Not. They're not. And they are going to learn from their experiences. And but, but once not, not as fast as they would have learned if they were still the USSR. Absolutely. That, that I don't question at all. All I'm saying is that, well, as it goes right now, mm -hmm. sure, I wouldn't say that Ukraine has the upper hand, but Russia isn't doing that well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I concur. Yeah. However, that might still change, which is why this is the correct time where we need to strengthen and reinforce Ukraine in all I'm manners that are possible. I'm not offering some, some pink glass, uh, glasses here. Mm. No, no, no. Mm. I, 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 you were about to say something. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, t over time, especially over the last decades, Russia has mm -hmm. lost initiative in many, many different uh, uh, spheres. Yeah. On the other hand, they have gained initiative in others. For instance, the the systemic uh, uh, corruption of, of uh, and and we uh, say in recruitment of yeah. uh, foreign political assets, for instance, yeah. in very we can take Hungary as one example, mm -hmm. um, and 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 of course uh, making new friends, Iran and whatnot. Yeah. So so uh, we should not definitely we, it will be extremely dangerous to underestimate Russia and its capability. While yes, it's not the same, you know this. I mean, Imperial force that that we might be, but they're but still, still yeah. definitely on the regional level, and also, well, of course, indirectly on, on on the global level, they are still uh, capable of, of inflict lots and lots of problems, losses. And they're still and very, very angry and savage. They, they they definitely have this culture of, of revenge, yeah. of, of, of uh, savagery, and whatnot. I mean, let's say I'm speaking of, of the Baltics and Lithuania. I mean, mm -hmm. do, do they would act exactly the same way would they come here as they do in Ukraine. So no have, doubt. you should have no illusions about no that. No doubt. Vida Siljunas, whom you know very mm -hmm. well, I believe, he wrote an article two days ago about this very thing. We shouldn't believe that we are not on their lists. We are, and you are. Oh, and oh you yeah. Are. yeah, yeah, all of us are. All of us are. <laughs> Uh, and therefore, again, uh, I see why are we are supporting, from Blue Yellow, we are supporting uh, Victor's unit here. Mm -hmm. I was there personally, yes, I, I met them, uh, also met them together with a, uh, a, a person uh, with, the, with the U.S. Congress. It was a very good meeting mm -hmm. uh, down where they are located right now. And I, I made a couple of conclusions. I think this is a very good uh, idea for a pilot as a kind of like a, a test how actually uh, uh, Western uh, unit with you know, Western command and and, and, and with uh, officers and soldiers from, from from the West could actually work as, as a very very effective and useful uh, operative resource for the Ukrainians. On the other hand, also I think it's very useful for us to actually, while these guys are being so intensely and intimately involved mm -hmm. with the realities of the Ukrainian armed forces, it's a great source of learning. Mm -hmm. How to actually maybe uh, we must understand that this integration again. I told you last time we met. I think that uh, Ukraine is de facto already NATO. Absolutely, NATO cannot leave. It's also um, the, the whole battle of Ukraine is also the battle of, battle of NATO <laughs> in a way. I do agree. Which means I couldn't agree more. Yeah, which means that we have to to do whatever we can to actually find. Uh, bridges, find connections, find ways to actually integrate Ukraine into the mm -hmm. NATO security sphere, NATO security thinking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think this is one of the, this is one of the best bridges I found so far. Mm -hmm. And believe me, I, I I've been looking around in Ukraine for this for for a long time. I know. So uh, we are offering. We all have also had meetings with other with with, with the Lithuanian military, for instance, politicians today. We are definitely trying to 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 provide ideas, thoughts for how this could be done differently. Mm -hmm. No one is saying that, that we, Lithuania, the West, are doing everything wrong. No, we are doing many great things. We are providing weapons, we are providing other kinds of support that actually makes a difference. Mm -hmm. But that said, that support is not going to last forever. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. It could not, I mean, weapons, fine, but you also have to think about other 
parts of the we have to think in a systemic way again and it's, it's about training it's about leadership it's about <coughs> command structures it's about actually being a able to to uh, facilitate all these resources in, in mm. the most effective manner and this, this thinking uh, you, you have to see be able to see more of it in ukraine that we have at present this is a very good example of that thinking mm -hmm. so that's why one of the reasons we are definitely behind these guys okay victor have you heard already about uh those atrocities the russians have inflicted i mean the torture chambers you told yeah. me last time yeah can you both talk about that uh, uh, well, I could probably say that that uh, in terms of, of, of uh, savagery and, 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 and looting and uh, raping and whatnot on the Russian side is a part of their warfare. It's not something that some, some partly it could be uh, probably be, be directed to the bad morale, the low morale of the Russian forces. Mm -hmm. They're not really motivated to be there. They're, they're, they're maybe the commanders are not motivated. It means that people lose lose uh, the discipline. They start to do do bad things. Mm -hmm. But it also, what those things you see, these atrocities, and 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 and, and it's also it's it's sanctioned. It's allowed mm -hmm. by, by the leadership. Mm -hmm. It's just Ukraine. You know, the, this this uh, less uh, valuable Russians or whatever they want to want to want to call them, Nazis, uh, Satanists, whatever. So, so it's 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 being sanctioned for, from above, from the very above. From the exactly. So, so it's yes, it's a part of their warfare. Mm -hmm. They what they're using terror. They're using the, the missiles, the drones. They're using these actions to, to actually to to, to uh, instill fear in mm -hmm. the in the Ukrainian population, and they don't care about the consequences. I mean that anybody you know you would you would simply care for reputation. You know mm -hmm. that the. Your soldiers are, are committing all these atrocities, mm -hmm. but but no, they don't. They don't. They don't care. So you, you have you seen anything of that sort yet? Well, here's that's the thing. I am a staff officer, basically. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, my guys. Uh, I mean, some, I'm, I'm sorry again. Have you uh, visited uh, some liberated territories and seen <laughs> these things? We, we, we've seen and we've talked to people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. But there, there is a, there's a big difference between those. Uh, since I'm actually the company commander, mm -hmm. um, and we're still in the setting up phase, that is, I would like to say yes, mm -hmm. but that's not entirely true. Um, what I do is basically I read a report for my guys. Mm -hmm. And some of my guys have been here since Mars. And uh, some of them were, um, I mean, they were in the defense of Kiev mm -hmm. and uh, everything that happened afterwards. So, I mean, those guys saw some absolutely horrendous things. Bucha, Ipen. Yeah, Bucha, uh, especially. Go Go yeah. Um, one guy, but he's not with us uh, anymore. Oh, sorry. Yes, but that is, um, <laughs> this is the thing, it's so large scale that it's difficult to, like, to know, even know where to start. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, you, ha you have those and, and but those are so well documented that I don't really know what I can add to it. But when I talk to other Western officers, like we still have our little community where we have mm -hmm. a dialogue with each other, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of interesting actually that we, me and my guys, we are not the first ones that had the idea of setting up uh, a medical unit as an operational resource. Mm -hmm. It's actually already been done. And they lasted three days. Mm -hmm because they set up a medical field hospital with a big red cross. It took three days and it was bombed to shit. Mm -hmm. Knowing purposely. Yeah, purposely. purposely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. because yeah. it was a field hospital. Yeah. So it's, it's not just about the atrocities. And I don't in any way wish to, to downplay the absolute seriousness of the brutality of the Russian soldiers against the civilian population. Mm -hmm. But that almost speaks for itself. And I am not the one who, sh who should be talking about that. The Ukrainian civilian population can, can speak for their own. I don't need to do that. This but but the, it, it's not only, not only that, and, and it's not only about the, how the Russians treat the prisoners of war. Mm. That is also a thing for its own. But it's actually about the systemic targeting of medical units. Mm -hmm. If you have an ambulance, you're not going to last a day. Mm -hmm. You need to remove that Red Cross. 
Right, and that's the whole thing. You can't drive around in a civilian ambulance. No, you have to you have to move it uh, you have to remove all the individual things and you have to rebuild them in like a civilian minibus you have mm -hmm. to remove all the seatings and you have to install it's like journalists stopped wearing those um, blue jackets mm -hmm. uh, because they became a very valuable assets for the terrorists i mean in afghanistan and, mm -hmm. and places like that yeah yeah, they started yeah wearing similar just yes normal fatigue that's the yeah. thing. If you if you if you if you wear a red cross, well, then you're a high priority target. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and, that, and that's just well, one, I'm, one I'm, thing. I'm not. I'm not. Well, I'm not shocked, but I'm still shocked. I mean, yeah. I, I could have known about that, but yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm not surprised, but I'm still disappointed somehow. Mm. It reminds me of uh, in the Falklands War. There was this occasion that when the the British entered the. Uh, St. Carlos Bay, and they had this huge vessel called Canberra, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was white, and it looked like a medical ship, and it wasn't. And uh, the uh, Argentine fighter pilots and bomber pilots, they just didn't shoot at it, mm. even though they, they, they had no time to acquire, uh, to recognize the target. They mm. thought, since it was white, it must have been mm. a medical ship, and they avoided it. Right. And uh, they gained a huge respect from the British counterparts right. for that. And uh, yeah, and then that is exactly what makes the Russians so damn brutal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, um, originally, I, w I don't know if I mentioned that, originally I didn't actually plan to go down to Ukraine. It simply kind of happened. Mm -hmm. But uh, w one of the, the triggers was actually in, in, in spring, just after the defense of Kiev. Mm -hmm where we were helping in coordinating medical supplies mm -hmm. and acquiring medical supplies for, for the region. You mean from Sweden? Uh, from Sweden, from, from, from most of Europe. Mm -hmm. We were just collecting it, we were okay. driving it down. And, mm -hmm. and we had, I can't remember the, the, the region's name, it was just east of Kiev, and they, they asked for medical supplies and they asked for a very specific thing, which was a, a, a surgical thread mm -hmm. that you use, that you use uh, um, uh, on women after pregnancies, mm -hmm. basically to stitch up the needy regions. Mm -hmm. And they had run out of it in the entire region because mm -hmm. the Russian soldiers had raped so many small girls that they were out of these threads. And that just kind of um, was the trigger. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck this. There's the sentiment that those are the bad Russians from those poor lands that surround Russia proper, yeah, but uh, I, I, they still don't have people from Leningrad, oh, I'm sorry, St. Petersburg and Moscow, mm. but I don't believe this shit, I think that's just the same. Uh, first of all, it's, it's sanctioned from above, it's very important, mm -hmm. so, so you just... Uh, you pick your, you pick your you units take and, and, and you, give them, you give them whatever, you know, to yeah. loot, do whatever you like. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, as we all know that, for example, raping has been, in some conflicts, it's been used as, as a weapon against the civil population. Yeah. So, so uh, somewhat similar to, to some situations in Africa, for instance, and also in, in, Hum in, in Yugoslavia. Human. And, 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 yeah. So it's, it's, it's been used as, as, as a weapon in the war mm -hmm. by the Russians. Uh, who is committing these uh, doesn't, in one way, doesn't really matter. But uh, uh, again, we must understand that the brutality of, of, of the Russians what came as a surprise to many Ukrainians as well. I can tell you one story. Mm -hmm. I know some, some people living in one of these uh, more posh regions outside of, of Kyiv, like Bucha, Irpin, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And before the war, uh, before the, the beginning of, the, of this phase of the war, uh, they were more worried about their servants, you know, the local Ukrainians say, if we leave, they know where everything is, then we come here and, and loot the houses. But the Russians are okay. Mm -hmm. And then the Russians came and, and some people even stayed behind mm -hmm. to, to save the, the property. And of course, you know, thinking that the Russians would be respectful and then they, you know, they came there, they looted, they raped. Mm -hmm. Uh, one on occasion that raped uh, the nanny in front of the kids and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. so uh, things like that. Uh, mm, it's 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 a it's 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 a sick nation basically. Mm -hmm. Russia is a very sick nation, 
and and uh, with lots of rabid dogs that have to be taken down. It's, rabid it's dogs. Very, very simple. Okay. Unfortunately, and I mean, I mean the, these, uh, and, and again, what's happening right now, we, we know that they're targeting the, the infrastructure, electricity, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Who does that? It's, it's, it's the work of a terrorist. It's the work of somebody who, who does not care about international agreements about anything. Goncharenko was sitting in that mm -hmm. very chair in the, in the studio, and he told a story about a Russian fighter pilot who bombed a town in Ukraine where his mother lived. And he knew about the oh. fact that she lived there. He bombed the, the city. Okay, that's a fact. Well, tells you something about the mindset of these people. Yeah, I will. I will never be able to understand it. Yeah, and I don't think there's any point of me trying to. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I, I don't really see the point. How do you? If you're able to commit those kind of atrocities yeah. with that disregard for human life, how old are you? Me, oh, I'm 29. 29, huh? Oh, yes. Um, if, if, you, if you are able to do that, mm -hmm. I, 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 will never, I will never be able to understand how you can reach that point. The time will come, and uh, when you tell these things to your compatriots, say five years later, provided the, the outcome is victorious, and it will pe be. people it must will, be. will not believe you. Yeah. They will tell you, it can't be. Mm. Well. So we gotta write books. We gotta, you know, do whatever. We live you know. in the digital age. <laughs> well, I, I just wrote a book, so I'm gonna write another one. And you know, that, that's uh, you can tell, take that away from me. But you would understand. Yes, memory is, is changes, and, and, and memory is also used as, as for politics, as mm -hmm. a weapon. And and there's you know the the uh, collective memory. We can take any s single occurrence of atrocities in in, in the past, it all is being questioned, you know, Holocaust didn't, didn't happen mm -hmm. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and, and not to speak about the Russian and, and their, their uh, continuous atrocities about, against their own population, against other populations, etc. Et and, and they're, they're trying to, to remove, uh, one good example was the, the, the removal of, of the memorial for Holodomor in, 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 oh. in Mariupol, for instance. Mm -hmm. Just giving you some ideas about that. Huh? Mm -hmm. and you must understand that this is, uh, I mean, this is a war on many, many levels, of course. It's about memory, it's, it's, it's about uh, geopolitics, it's about territories, it's about, uh, you know, values. And uh, again, I, I repeat, w Russia at this point is challenging every single level of that, what I believe in, in terms, you know, you know mm -hmm. humanity, em empathy, uh, equality, democracy. They challenge all of it. Don't so. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I have a feeling. I recall 1991, the August well, coup d'état. Yeah, right, right. And uh, the victory came overnight. It took three days, three nights. And when Yeltsin approached, well, he climbed on a tank yeah. and yeah. gave his um, notorious speech. And the day, the next day, it was obvious. Everything is won. And I have the same feeling these days. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong. But uh, um, taking into account the fact that Putin is, is nowhere to be seen, there's something going on behind the scenes there. Mm. And am I, am I too optimistic, yes. you tell me? Not. Yes, you are. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry to say, I might be wrong, of course, but my estimation from what I, I see, from what I, I, I gather information of all kinds, from all kinds of sources, this is, uh, we are looking to a very, into a very long, complicated, mm -hmm. uh, bloody, unfortunately, uh, uh, vengeful conflict uh, involving uh, two parts. I mean, speaking of Ukraine and, and Russia, neither side can withdraw mm -hmm. for various reasons. Absolutely, yes, yes. yes. And, and uh, I, I would have no illusions, no hopes at this point that this is gonna change to the better anytime soon. But then again, it's not the Soviet Union just sure, one. sure, but but uh, we should never, do not ever underestimate Russia and, and its its. Uh, it goes without saying. Ambitions. Absolutely, yes. I'm oh, for the best plan, for the worst. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I'm afraid uh, that Babchenko's point is uh, is uh, right. I mean, he's uh, he's keeping this, keeps saying that. Uh, look at Iran. 
it's been decays that it's been isolated and sanctioned, and it's still is being alive and kicking. And able to provide weapons to Russia. Absolutely. So the same thing can, could mm -hmm. go for Russia for many, many years. Uh, we must understand that we need a military victory mm -hmm. in Ukraine against Russia. Russia has to be pushed out of you from Ukrainian territory, including Crimea. Mm -hmm. And that, again, is only a part of the solution. We mm -hmm. also have the political, the diplomatical, the economical, mm -hmm. the, and the cultural and whatnot, mm -hmm. all these other aspects. But, but to think that at this point we can somehow in any way uh, you know, come to terms with Russia and take it to agreement, it's impossible. It's, it's, yeah, it's suicide, basically. I know. I know. So. I know, and you know, though. No. Yeah. So, uh, how, for, for uh, how many days have you spent here? Uh, one day. One day, and you coming yeah. back tomorrow or so? No, no. So, uh, I've been back in Sweden for two weeks. Uh, the original idea was only supposed to put my, mm -hmm. my small sailboat on dry land, and I was supposed to get a new ID. Mm -hmm. That was the only things mm -hmm. I was going to do, and I was going to spend time with my family. Mm -hmm. Do you um, have a wife and children? No, I do not. Oh. I do not. Uh, but then came along this guy and he changed everything mm. and I've been going on meetings and interviews oh. non-stop. Okay. Which is, which is fine. Um, uh, we were on, uh, for instance, on uh, sorry, uh, Swedish TV, TV Channel 4 uh -huh. uh, some time ago on, on, a, on a very interesting, uh, you know, morning, morning sofa basically and talking mm -hmm. about Ukraine, I think was a... That opened the floodgates, but it was never yeah. really my, my original idea. I'm, I'm very much outside of my comfort zone right now, mm -hmm. just so everyone here knows. <laughs> this is not my thing at all. Chances are you will find some pretty girl in Ukraine. Why not? Well, they, are, they are beautiful. <laughs> I'm half Ukrainian, by the way. Oh, you are beautiful. I heard you were fishing, so <laughs> might as well. My mother is from Ukraine. She's yeah. Ukrainian, yes. Okay. All right. Right, I'm happy that he found a cat at least. That's a good start. That I did. A cat, that. Yeah, actually, I have. What's a its name? Frey. Frey. It originally it was called Freya, but then it turned out it was a dude. So well, it's Frey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. While, 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 while ducking from from a missile. What was no, that? so basically we had these Shahid drones coming in, and uh, we, we went out to disperse. And, like, no point sitting in the same building, so we dispersed outside. Uh, it was night time, mm -hmm. and. Uh, well, while outside, um, I heard this meow coming from a bush. So I just went and... Kss, kss, and is it meow in Swedish as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, like, <laughs> was a small, small, <laughs> yeah, it was a small, small kid. And uh, yeah, it came up to me mm -hmm. and I petted it. It climbed up and it fell asleep in my arm, like in, inside of my jacket. They're very confident when they need that. Yeah. Yes. So you should call him Shahid, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, maybe, yeah. <laughs> No, so I, uh, yeah. I, well, I mean, it's not like I can just put him back on the ground again. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I, I mean, he adopted me. Oh, That's what he cats adopted do. you. Of you. course, like, it's not my <laughs> cat. I mean, I'm his human. That's, yeah, absolutely. They're, yeah. they're cats. Yeah. Like, you can't own them. Victor, thank you very much. And I think uh, you are a very nice example, a very brave young man. Uh, thank you, Jonas, too. Thank you. And uh, stay safe, please. And of course, uh, I just want to say, add to that, we as a Lithuanian organization, we are supporting the, these mm -hmm. Swedish uh, colleagues and friends. Mm -hmm. And of course, I can only, only, you know, tell everybody to, to, to donate, donate even more yeah, so for I, well, our purpose. Definitely, I will write everything uh, about it in, in the description of this video, and I will spread yeah. it as, thank as you. much as I can. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. Thank it you. It feels uh, pretty thank nice, you. actually, to just feel that there's so much support. Yeah. Even I wish if you I can't, could do more. You, you, we all do. We all do. But we can all only do what we're able to, really. I'm thinking I will give you one of my pistols. No, maybe not. Ačiū, kad žiūrėjote. Ačiū, kad žiūrėjote. Remkit šitą organizaciją, titrą yra prašyme. Šį kartą būnėjų jūsų pinigai, na, būtent šitam būriui.